the first word. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved the others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. In his powerful little book, The Promise of Paradox, Parker Palmer writes an important statement. The cross says the pain stops here. The way of the cross is a way of absorbing pain, not passing it on. A way that transforms pain from destructive impulse into creative power. When Jesus accepted the cross, his death opened up the channel for the redeeming power of love. Friends, we experience this incredible love through Jesus' first word from the cross. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. This forgive word is translated as a number of different terms throughout the New Testament that give us some more context, a deeper understanding of just what Jesus was asking in this moment. Forgive, permit, let, release, leave. This is the word used when the devil leaves Jesus after tempting him for 40 days in the wilderness, right before his ministry really begins. Jesus uses this word again when he asks, Would you not leave the 99 sheep to find the one? This is the word we would translate as, let the little children come to me. And this is the same word used in the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In this deep forgiveness, this sweeping abolition of any semblance of wrongdoing is used here as Jesus is nailed to the cross and his clothes are auctioned off before a clamoring crowd. What we're really learning here is that Jesus' ministry is continued even in his death. Jesus came to announce and to embody the reign of God through the redeeming power of love. In his life, his works of compassion restored people to wholeness. Dining with Pharisees and sinners alike, Jesus demonstrated the all-inclusive nature of God's steadfast mercy. His parables invited people to imagine a world in which Samaritans demonstrate righteousness. Weakness models wisdom, and widows win justice. His path in life led him to his death, where the same crowds that acclaimed him as king abandoned their savior like an empty soda can left stranded in the bleachers at a baseball game. Yet... Jesus approaches his death just as he lived, seeking justice, mercy, and eternal life for all, no exception. The frequent picture of Jesus pronouncing forgiveness apart from overt demonstrations of repentance is amplified as Jesus seeks relief from any and all blame for those who mock torture, and kill him. So as we consider just what the cross means to us 
on this day of seemingly endless darkness. Let us remember this word of forgiveness, of release, of vindication, meant yes for the crowd witnessing Jesus' crucifixion, but meant also for us as we tell this story centuries later. And in so doing, may we truly be liberated from our captivity, just as we release that which holds us captive as well, anticipating the great deliverance to come in just a few days. Let us pray. Living God, help us to hear your holy word that we may truly understand and that in understanding we may believe and in believing we may follow in all faithfulness and service seeking your glory and honor in all that we do. We pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.